Good morning. Welcome to Expat Insights. I'm your host, Raju Mandhian. Here at Expat Insights, we take external views of internal successes by foreigners, expats, and immigrants who have made the Philippines their home. Tonight on Expat Insights, we have one guest. We were supposed to have two. The other one got stuck in Vietnam. My second guest, who's still here, or who's here today, his name is Philip John Golding, and he's the VP of American Hospitality Academy. He's a chef, of course, and he's been in the country for over 15 years, Englishman by birth and Filipino by practice. He is here today to discuss hospitality and cooking in the Philippines. And he's not just going to discuss, he's going to show us something. So today the show is not just tell, but show and tell. Chef Golding, welcome to Expat Insights. Welcome. It's great to be here. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I've been here 17 years. Oh, okay. And uh, (coughs) cooking is obviously my passion and my love. And uh, I'm very fortunate to have a great job with some um, amazing students that are now uh, working with us. So, yeah, they'll be cooking up something from a new book that we're working on, which is... uh, um, around cancer and well-being. So b- before we go into the subject matter of mm. hospitality and cooking, no? yeah. I need to uh, introduce you to the audience because they've never met you. I know you're famous, really famous, uh, in your, in your neck own, of woods, in, in, your own neck mind, of, yeah. in your own <laughs> mind. No? In your own mind. So uh, number one is, mm. I want to know is for you, yeah. besides cooking and hospitality and besides the people of the Philippines, mm. no? who, who everyone loves, what else is more fun? To you? More fun. Well, More fun, yeah. Family is very important. I mean, family, uh, I've got two boys. Right. One is 16 and one is um, uh, 10, yeah. And, you know, my wife is also involved with the school. Right. She runs the service side. We met in London, you know, unlike a lot of couples, you know, they meet here. Mm-hmm. But we met in London and we chose to bring the kids up in the Philippines because of the values, because of what we saw in the Philippines and what we loved. And, um, yeah, we could have gone to Malaysia, Hong Kong, Singapore to do the businesses we were involved in. But there's something very special about the Philippines. And I was very fortunate that um, I met a, a guy called Billy King, who everybody pretty much the knows. The musician. Billy King, the, the chef of the Marcuses. Okay, all right. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. An Irish guy. Mm-hmm. Who, you know, when we <coughs> came here, I mean, just that whole sea, sand, beach, great weather. Yeah. And then the people, of course, the people, um, the, the warmth, the hospitality hospitality the um, yeah it was you know, in the earlier days was a little bit of a challenge you know trying to find um, suppliers and and, and and good restaurants it's changed a so, lot. so so I assume your wife's a Filipina because she's I didn't yeah. say that I she's didn't know that. yeah she's from Cebu, Cebu and in London she was studying uh, HRM uh, in the Isle of Man and she basically slipped on my kitchen floor in uh, oh, London oh, she saw my you fault. she saw you and she slipped uh, it's my fault <laughs> <laughs> okay so, so, yeah, we, we had our boys, you know, both, uh, both the boys grew up uh, early part in London, and then we decided because of the amount of work pressure. That right, right. It, it's, it's tough. We thought that it would be really good you know, to come over and experience it. And we, we decided to say a couple of years, which turned out to be every time we're about to it's move. A couple of decades now. <laughs> yeah, it's, when you look back at it, it's a... Long you, you, you write about this, you know, uh, across the world, across the world, in Western countries, people who have a little connection to Asia or to uh, this part of the world, they prefer bringing their kids up here because I think they have a lot it's more fantastic. contact with the kids. So that's, that's a plus. So that's more fun for you, it's breeding more, kids. It's more fun. I mean, I was, I was, very, I was very fortunate to meet um, uh, a guy called Denny Wang as well. Who? who Denny Wang. He's a Chinese national that that runs a place called Yats Wine Cellars, which I fell in love with his business. And we worked together for many years in Pampanga. And I was at that point where Manila is, you know, it's a busy place. Mm-hmm. But I wanted the boys to grow up in an environment where there's a bit more grass. Um, and they're both lovely football players. I mean, they get out there in the schools. So I spent a bit of time running between here and Clark and Angeles. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy with, with how they've grown up um, in in Angeles and I think it, it's good now to integrate them a bit more into Manila because Manila has changed so much from Rockwell. It's very cosmopolitan. Fo- it's yeah. incredible. I mean it's not like the provinces at all. It's not, it's not a suburb anymore. Nope. It's very well, urban. I always remember drinking three in one coffee when I came here. So I'd worked in Italy, worked in Paris. Where do you get a cappuccino? Where do you get a... Here now, 
it's an explosion over the last five years of coffee. It's yeah, everywhere. No, so crazy. you're spoiled. You're spoiled for choice these days. You, you mentioned a couple of businesses. No, uh, mm. we, we'll take a break in five minutes, then sure. we'll come back and show mm. on the show rather than just tell. No? But uh, can you mention your businesses that you own, run, started? Okay. How are they doing? So from very humble beginnings in, in the Philippines, right. I was able to... 17 years ago. Yeah, 17 years ago, you know, working your way through pretty old kitchens, right? Right. You know, um, really working through and people invested a lot of money, obviously, into um, their businesses and they really want to make sure that the chef is the one running it properly from... Well, isn't indeed the heart and soul of any business, well, any food business, no? You know, it, 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 you've got chefs that are great cooks, great chefs, but not great business managers. You've right. got business managers, you've got chefs that are great business managers, but not great cooks. Right. To get right. a balanced right. balance, um, these days you need to understand a, a lot more than just cooking. Mm. And I've been very fortunate that I've been guided in some of the business with some great partners. And I have a partnership with the Leasings who run the UPL shipping lines. And Leasings as in like the comedian? Leasings as in Mexico Pampanga. Not, oh, okay. So they, they currently have 7,000 uh, employees on their shipping lines. And they forged an agreement with me a few, about nine, 2009. And it was really towards education, training, and lifting up the standards, especially on the shipping lines. At the same time, I was working with Jean Cordoba of um, mm -hmm. uh, another school that <coughs> was the first kind of academy. There's a that Filipino came up. who's now with AHA. He's the president, um, okay. a, a great friend, um, yeah. so committed to developing. Um, Filipino chefs, very, very passionate, mm. worked abroad, um, he's backed by a very good team. So what's happening now is that uh, my life has changed and in the last eight months I spent in Vietnam going back and forth as well, I really understood the value of the Filipino chef. Mm. And not only the chef but wine sommeliers, the whole industry, which we have currently about 700 to 1,000 positions to fill in the next two months. Wine chevaliers. Sommeliers, people that understand, you know, you see wine drinking has made a big move. In the this is for years. the leasing, so this is for some other... Well, the leasing is the partnership, the Golden Culinary Group, which is my company. The Golden yeah. Culinary Group um, works hand in hand with providing jobs. And then when you're at the ships for 15 years, you want to come home to your family, you know. Mm. You've been away, it's tough, it's tough. Yeah, yeah, Leaving yeah. your family to go and get a paycheck. Our industry is, can be a very tough industry. It can be a, it's a wonderful very industry. Demanding. It's very demanding. And that balance is always, you know, in the, always hanging, the balance. So we, we, we send people out, but we love to keep them here as well. So yeah. if they want to stay here, our mission is to create jobs, bars, restaurants, hotels, clubs. But of course, we need to create them not just as talent, is really uh, make them understand that it is a business. Mm. And for us to flourish and for them to be happy and support mm -hmm. their families, we need to understand oh, that... Also, not just the skills, but plus the opportunities at the same time locally. Yeah. So, yeah. so Golding is one business? Golding, the Golding Curry Group is one business which is expanding. I'm so a happy. AHA is the other business? AHA is, is really, really my, my okay. day job. It's okay. there from 5.30, uh, you know, we're up in the school to... Okay. Chef, we're going to take a break. Yeah. Uh, after the break, you promised to show us how to cook. Yes, yeah. I brought in so much But, but uh, would you, before the break, quickly describe what we're going to cook? Uh, Basically, I brought Ronnie along with me. He's going Ronnie to... Ronnie is one of your students yeah, at EHA, okay. He's one of my students. Um, he's working with me on running a restaurant. So we actually have a, a working restaurant in Salcedo. We always get gimmicks. Yeah. Toasters, grillers. And yeah. What can you do with it? Yeah. So, of course, you know, people always, you know, do we need an industrial kitchen? No, you don't. We brought a panini grill in. Mm -hmm. We're going to marinate some chicken in paprika, make a little salsa. What do we it. call it? It's propinka marinated chicken with salsa, tomato salsa. What was it again? Uh, um, paprika. Paprika. Marinated, paprika marinated chicken, uh, grilled on a breville toaster with okay. tomato salsa. Pa paprika marinated chicken on a panini toaster. That's what grilled we're going to do. Grilled on a panini toaster. Grilled on a panini toaster with tomato salsa. Okay, with tomato salsa. All right. <laughs> so we'll come back after the break, and Chef Golding is going to cook us some chicken. So yeah. stay watching. This is Expat Insights, and when you come back, this is the first time in Expat Insights we'll be standing up. So 
here we are again. Uh, this is a different setup for Expat Insights. Welcome back. I hope you're still watching. So, uh, Chef Golding and I, and of course, Ron, our new guest here, Ron Coley. Yes. We're going to cook mm -hmm. up uh, paprika marinated tomato salsa grilled chicken. Yes. That's a really long name for it, no? Mm -hmm. But we'll go with it. So, on the table, what do we have here, Chef? Okay, so we have chopped. Bell peppers, okay. Garlic, okay. Red onions, onions, yeah. Tomato that's been deseeded, yeah. Fresh coriander, paprika. Deseeded, as in lime. cheated. Deseeded, mm -hmm. cheated, deseeded. Cheated, yeah. yeah. So basically, uh, the seeds have been removed. It's a cheated tomato. You've got okay. it. A cheated. Right. And, and then paprika from Hungary. Two breasts of chicken. Two chickens from Philippines, which have been deboned. Right? Deboned, the okay. Deboned. deboned. And then for the habanero uh, sauce on the side here. Okay. Uh, we've got um. Red onions again, red peppers, garlic, okay. and the uh, peppers. Peppers again. This is for cleaning the table afterwards? That's for yeah. wash as you go, you know, maybe you need to start yeah. it with your hands. Uh, right? uh. So there you go, and there you go. So <laughs> basically, it's that, you know, hygiene is very important in what we do all the time. I thought creativity was important, not cleanliness. Well, when you're playing with raw chicken and vegetables, cleanliness is important. And this one is what kind of oil is this? We've got a, a mix of olive oil and vegetable oil there. I, can I use this for my car? Absolutely. Okay, then. Yeah. Okay, fine. Okay, go go ahead, go. make my day. With a couple make of my chicken. <laughs> a couple of domestic toys here. We've got a little Breville juicer. And okay. we've got a roller grill. So, you know, we, 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 in the school, we're always working with development on projects and with equipment. So, we get a lot of help um, and a lot of toys to play with. So, basically, what we're going to do now is that uh, he's just going to spice up these chicken breasts. Yeah, so. One breast at a time? No, you do two at the same time. Okay. A little, a little bit of oil. Okay. This is cool. And this is, you know, we're working on this uh, Eat and Cheat Cancer. A very good friend of mine who's a cancer survivor. He's a Canadian Phil, Filipino. And I know him. You're talking about Bobby? Uh, no, a guy called Lara Vives. Okay. Uh, no, Bobby's wife. Bobby's wife. Oh, Bobby Robertson Tai. Okay. His wife. He runs a cancer uh, foundation to help uh, people suffering from cancer. Is that Carewell Foundation? Yeah, Carewell okay, Foundation. Yeah, yeah. We, we partnered with Carewell Foundation. Yeah. Right. And uh, what's happened is, is that we put the book together. Uh, Laurel Vives is the, the pioneer who I'm working with. We've got a group of chefs together. And what's happened is, is basically um, we're working on the book. Uh, it'll be out by the end of the year. And we've got about 60 recipes in there. And it's in tribute to my love. All in uh, for cancer prevention. For cancer prevention and mm. wellness. So, um, what's oh. that? It's already cooked? This is the time I was set a bit earlier, right? So, right. we're going to so down and get this Wait again. Uh, cheated tomato, deceited tomato, chopped red onions, onions coriander. garlic, uh, green pepper, and colantro. You've got it. And lime. Okay, good. So yeah, I mean, just simply season the, season the uh, chicken. Yeah. Okay. Are you done? Ron's gone? No, I'm just He's getting coming back. I'm Ron, Ron's run off again. <laughs> is, it, is it okay to put the uh, spices while it's grilling or yes. do you want to marinate them? Well, uh, actually, it's it? nice if you can marinate them. I mean, yogurt's great. You know, you've got the habanero peppers, you've got the red onions, you've got peppers going in there. Go, go slowly. Tell me step by step because I want to do this at home. Okay. Ronnie? Okay. Yeah, step one. Step one, wash the chicken. Wash the chicken, of course. All right, chop everything up. Correct. You have to be really clean. Don't cross it. Okay. Now, my question is, uh, do you use a wooden board or a plastic board? What's a, what's a healthier one? You know, I, it, it, this is a, always a question, but plastic boards are great if you clean them properly. They need soapy, cold water. Wooden boards are also great for baking, for yeast. Uh, there's this controversy about the boards. But, you know, as long as you clean things properly, no problem. A friend of mine says that you shouldn't use the same knife for chicken and fish. What you, can, say? You, you can, but you just got to clean it properly. Okay, okay, it. okay. No problem with it. But there is a difference. That's a chopping knife, which is used for meat, and more of the filleting knife is used for. This is it. This is it. Just it. So easy, no? This is a good blender. This is a great blender. Breville yeah. and work with Breville and another company that. How long does it take to become a chef like you, Philip Goldley? We're always learning. I've been doing it for 30 years now, and we continue to learn and look at new trends. And um, next year, I'll, for the first time in the Philippines, 
I'll be bringing in a group of very talented chefs from the Escoffier Association. That's uh, Auguste Escoffier. Auguste Escoffier. And yeah. we will have nine Michelin star uh, in total. Nine what? Michelin stars. So we're bringing in a three star, we two star. We can't talk with a blender. We're not to stop the blender. Nine Come. what stars? Nine Michelin stars. Michelin stars? Yes. Like in the tire? Michelin, yeah, actually, that's where it started. The right. guidebook was from the Michelin book from the tire. So, yes, they would travel around and rate restaurants. So, quite true. Oh, the Michelin. tire company was uh, helping it's out very cooking. Beginning. Yeah, mm -hmm. they were, yes. They were helping rating cooking. So, the chicken's cooking away. It's going to take another couple of minutes. You want to finish off the sauce? Yes. Check the seasoning. Check I'm the I'm hungry already. I don't think we've put lime juice in there yet, no? No, Except not yet. For the salsa. Uh, chicken's the cooking away lovely there. The <laughs> board's nice and clean. So what I want you to do... Me, me. Here, I want you to add... Uh, Should I use my fingers? Uh, I already cut my finger chopping onion. Use, taste, use one and a half tablespoons. This is a tablespoon? Yep. So How many teaspoons make a tablespoon? Uh, one, one tablespoon is the equivalent to 15 ml. One teaspoon is 5 ml or 5 so grams. Three, three teaspoons make one tablespoon. So that's 15 ml, yeah. uh, 15 grams. Can I put a lot more garlic because yeah, a lot is so good? So for put you. all of it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Garlic's good. So what I'm gonna do is. How about it. onion? How much onion do I put? You go for half of that. Half of that onion is in the cook. So we're making the salsa for the chicken. Yeah. Right. And what I want you to do also is, if you don't mind, I know your hands are clean. Yeah. Squeezing that into there. Okay. All right. We need some salt. Both pepper. hands. Both hands. Yeah. Okay. That's good. You want to season it up with salt and pepper and then taste it. Everything we do needs to I be I taste tasted. the lime before I... No, taste the salsa once we put everything in. Okay. Just to make sure that there's put enough... Put salt and pepper? Yep. Pass it to me. You got it? All right. Uh, how much? You know what? To taste. So okay, so it's up give to me. a couple of shakes. All right. This okay. is easy. You know, it easy. looks easy. Enough. But enough. Yeah. Enough, enough. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Good. How about some spray there? No? No, no spray. No spray. Chicken's nearly done, so... Okay. Basically... Do you, do you usually put wine in your food? I love wine with my food. I love wine pairing cuisine. It's great fun um, because of fat. No, not drink it. Put oh. it in the food. Yeah, I do. I cook co van and, and dip dishes that are braised with wine, lamb. Um, yeah, we do use a lot of wine in our cooking. We have a little restaurant in Salcedo called Upper East. Upper East, where all the it's students, like New York, like New York. Yeah. Every Thursday we do we do a bring your own bottle, and with that, bring your own bottle. Okay. Yeah. With that, you bring your own bottle, and basically we pair food and cook food, and the students do a fabulous job. Don't and we you do things don't, like this. don't you wear gloves while cooking? Sh you know what? There, again, another contrary. If you're there in the, within the public eye, and you, you know it's required by a hotel to wear gloves, then you wear gloves. But for me. Honestly, if you sanitize and wash your hands all the time, before it's clean. you start, yeah. You could have a problem with gloves contaminating food as well. Because you touch one thing and you move to another thing. Because you, you have no idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, you know, it's really wiping down, cleaning down. The chicken breasts yeah. are done. Why is he cleaning up the dish? Why is the rod clean? Always important to keep your plates nice and clean, right? We need a little bit more salt. There you go. We need a little bit more salt in mm. there. But with the spice. What kind of olive oil was that? Uh, it's a friend of us put in some Spanish olive oil, actually. It's very, very good. And it's just olive oil or something else? A little bit of vegetable oil. Yeah. Little bit, little vegetable, bit. Oil. vegetable oil. Vegetable oil. Man, this looks good. <laughs> We're promoting food without... Min we're trying to minimize the use of salt. So a little bit of salt, more of the spice to get the flavor. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yogurt would be great with this. Instead uh, of instead of salt. Yeah, try to use fresh herbs instead of using more salt. Yeah, we can't see it. Can you put the grill down? Can you put the grill down? Yes. All right, there you go. That, that was basically it. Very there you go, there you go, there you go. A this nice is tapas dish. This is paprika chicken with a nice grilled nice. tomato salsa sauce. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what should I drink with this? A nice white wine, maybe a Riesling or a nice Pinot Noir or a sparkling, some kind of sparkling would be very good. The wine shops now, I have so many wines, so many varieties, it would be something crisp, white and clean because mm. of the spices Be in it. Okay. How about now, uh, should I take bread, potatoes or rice or just uh, some salad or vegetables? With uh, it? Tortillas, rice, you know, nice brown rice, organic. So as I was saying, the book that we're working on... Um, so, so how healthy is this? Very healthy, right? From you a ranking of 1 to 100. 
No grease? No grease, no oil. Yeah. Okay. Chicken no fats. Organic. Mm -hmm. No fat. I mean, it's just everything stays. You can look at the colors. You know, that's so how I tell food a lot. Show the colors. So let's yeah. put this down and chop it up and taste it. Yeah? Yeah. Can you hold it? Yeah. Alright, so a fork and a knife. There you go. There's your fork. Okay. So basically, oops. So how easy is it to r start a restaurant in the Philippines, Chef Golding? Very easy if you call me. Call me. No, not <laughs> without you. For, for a person watching there, there's, yeah, there's a, a friend of mine, uh, what's her name? Cory, Cory de Borg. She's okay. a missionary and her husband's American and she wants to start a restaurant. So how does she go about well, it? First of all, does she need to learn to cook or does she get a chef that like... Helps. That helps. Learning yeah? to cook yeah, is, yeah, a, yeah. is the first step. I think then you've got to look at things like... Um, you know, you've you got to have a very good business plan. Yeah. Uh, You've you got to look at your target market. Yeah. Um, I'll try as well. Yeah. Sure, you want, you want to try some? Go on. There we go. Here we go. Here oh, we so, go. again, uh, starting a restaurant, you need passion. It's a business that you really have to work at. You've got to be hands on, um, unless you have an amazing chef or manager. It really is a lot of dedication. Uh, and, again, depending on the style of restaurant you want to open, obviously, a fast food restaurant. Still good. It's a very good fast food restaurant. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to open up um, something a little bit more elevated as a restaurant, you really need to be hands-on, and you need to build a good team. I'm very lucky that I work with the students and, and get these guys. These are our future restaurateurs and chefs. And right. Yeah. Hmm. Let me ask you. The chicken to me, uh, see, tastes a bit like chicken still. Good. That means uh, I want to taste the tomato inside, the onion inside. You could so put. Does it require a little more, bit more cooking than? Okay, so you would then... It seems like kind of medium rare. That's what I meant. Yeah, like medium rare. Well, yeah. it shouldn't be medium rare. It's cooked through there. It's probably very tender, right? You're probably used to overcooked chicken. I know, burnt cooking. <laughs> I'm used a to it cooked in a over it, yeah. yeah. Any salad, there you go, right? But you, you could have put this in yogurt, right, for mm -hmm. 24 hours, and that would be extremely healthy, and the enzymes would work on the protein, mm -hmm. and it would be still very tender. We do a chicken dish cooked in a water bath at 70 Celsius. That chicken... Wa water bath as in... Water bath as in... We use Steamed. A, uh, we get, we get a, a thermostat, we attach it to a, a, what we call a water bath. It's mm -hmm. a plastic container, and we cook it at a constant temperature. And it's sous vide technology. It's cooked in a bag, it's extremely flavorful. So, a chicken takes a shower? It takes a shower, hot shower, yeah? All right. Very slowly uh, for, for 30 minutes, and then you would not believe how tender this chicken is. So, that's what we teach a lot of transfer of knowledge. But, yeah. Um, it should be me medium rare chicken. I mean, as you it's can see, see, it's lovely cooked. It's white. It's okay. Okay. It's, 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 it's my part. I'm used to burnt chicken, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, now, uh, chef, what's what's a balanced diet to you? What is a balanced diet? Well, I've recently lost some weight myself. I put on a tremendous amount of weight. Yeah. And then I started getting into the book. It was quite interesting. So I'm trying to make sure that. I cut down on rice, potatoes, more salads, greeny leaf things, um, fish. I'm trying to cut down a little bit of meat intake as well. And eating a small meals <laughs> regularly, not eating... Um, One big meal. What's that? Chicken on my chin? Chicken, chicken on my chin. chin. Yeah. Oh, Caught in the chicken act. <laughs> Caught in the chicken act. Yeah, a balanced um, diet with a lot of juices. Mm -hmm. So we have blenders. Uh, and it's becoming exciting because you see the colors very vibrant and working a lot with, with, with mushrooms and ingredients, turmeric, that um, you know, give you this balanced... Uh, so balanced diet is everything but not in large portions. Small, small regular eating, yeah. And again, you, you, need, you need your exercise. You need to exercise. And uh, we teach that in school. Even in the culinary school, we get our students on a... On a a balanced diet is not like a burger in one hand and a french fries in another one and they're both mm -hmm. of the same. That's not balanced diet. No, no. That's not balanced. But we all have a burger, yeah? And yeah. A good burger. So it's just, you know, have it once a week, but then eat more protein. You know, there's, uh, it doesn't have to be expensive. There's a lot more items out there. Cooking, steaming, poaching, roasting. Cooking, steaming, poaching, Techniques. deep frying. No, no, no mm. matter how good the oil is. Cut, a, cut away the pork, yeah, the pork's used a lot here. Yeah. Eat pork once a week if you need to. Leaner cuts of meat, take out the fat, reduce the salt. Yeah. How, how, about, how about reheating food? 
What, what love reheating food, especially curries. I love curries. Reheating, no, always does, great does reheating rate. add value? Does it add flavor or does it add nutrients or does it take it away? What does the reheating do? Temperature, when you start to heat at a certain level, will kill the vitamins, the nutrients. So there's this movement towards raw, what we call raw, which is um, not raw as in raw, but as in uh, less cooking. So more marinations, yeah, yeah, more salads. Yeah, which yeah. again, you know, what I would say is that if you're going to try and lose weight or you try and eat healthy, don't do it drastically. It's got to be fun, slowly, mm. uh, and, and balance it. And, and again, the information out there now, a lot more chefs are dedicating to this health movement. And, mm. and you, you, years, you're part of that too. I'm a huge of part of it for me now. So a friend of mine uh, went on a raw food diet. Well, not really raw, raw, but less cooked diet, and he really lost weight That's and right. being good. So he, he, he did everything through the mixers and grinders and juice them, and he lived on that. And he chose food that was alive rather than dead. What does Excellent. that mean? Yeah, what does it mean alive? What does it mean to you? Well, first of all, being yeah. a chef, you need good ingredients. You need to go yeah. to markets. These are very basic ones, yes. you know, cilantro and garlic. Yeah. I use them all the day, yeah. every day. Yeah. So good ingredients. Mm -hmm. Don't go out there. There, there's some nice dishes that are braised and simmered and cooked, but understand that heat to a certain degree does kill a lot of nutrients. So you have to balance what you use as components, right? Yeah. Almost like making a painting, the canvas, the paint, mm. choosing the colors, textures, and ensuring that... I thought everything brown is good. Oh, brown, brown, and brown. We know <laughs> a lot about brown, brown, brown. But no, I mean, brown's pretty dull. Yeah. Uh, there is a tendency in, in the Philippines for the food before to be quite dark, yeah? Yeah. But you're now seeing a new vibrant mix of creative chefs that are trained and moving towards, as I right. said, right. more wholesome, interesting, flavorful food. Yeah, I'm hungry. Can I have the whole thing? You can have it. Yeah, but do I have to pay you for it? Do I have to pay? Absolutely not. How much is that in a restaurant like yours? Uh, probably, honestly, in a tapas restaurant. Free. We're doing that. Free for me. 80 pesos. 80 pesos. Yeah, 80 All right. Pesos. So if you want to have that chicken cooked by Chef Golden, go to Upper East in Salcedo. Yes. And you get that for 80 pesos plus plus. That's what we do. We do tapas, small portions, and then basically you bring in a bottle. We don't charge any corkage, and we get groups together, and it's every Thursday. Let's take a break. Yeah. Then we clean up the table and come and talk to you about the business of hospitality in the Philippines and the future of it. So Excellent. stay watching, and if you want a bite of this, go to Chef Golding's restaurant at Salcedo Village. That was really good. Can I have one more piece? Take a break. Stay watching. All right, welcome back to Expat Insights, the cook show tonight. And we have with Chef Golding and with Ron Coyoli, and they're making up one more chicken. And while they're making up one more chicken, it's a different chicken. It's not, it's not a paprika marinated, but it's thigh of the chicken. What are you doing with chicken it, Chef? Uh, just, just grilling the thigh again. With oh, that, that, that looks good, really good on TV, too. <laughs> that makes me more hungry. It's lunchtime. No, it's Friday, and it's lunchtime. So, Chef, can I, I spoke to you about people wanting to start a business, no? Yeah. Tell me first about AHA. What is AHA? American Hospitality Academy, uh, www.ahafill.com, yeah. is uh, an academy that started five years ago. By uh, the by chef Jean, that you mentioned, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, right, again. And, was uh, that a phone? Or was that <laughs> <laughs> that it's that got a mind of its own. It's a G mind of its own. Stand there and flip that over, yeah? We yeah, yeah, good, yeah. Good, okay. keep it turned over. Yeah. So Gene started the school with a vision to world-class Filipino chefs, uh, seasoning today's chefs now. Okay. And the school is doing very, very well in this Salcedo. This is in Salcedo Village. In, in Salcedo. Uh, we're expanding. We do uh, joint ventures with Miriam, Mapua schools. We right. do entrepreneur, sh uh, um, entrepreneur courses. We um, have... Uh, a number of, of, of students aging from 16, 17 up into their 14, 15. How long are the courses? Six months, two years, four years. Certificate, year. diploma, bachelor's degree. Yeah, we work very, very closely with Academy, uh, with the American uh, Culinary Federation yeah. in New York. Mm -hmm. Very, very close with them. We bring a lot of guest chefs. And then we have around 600 students working all over the world now. AHA Philippines? Started with us, go through the school, and then we get the job. Over the last five, y five years, you've done 600 students? Oh, 600 students just being placed. Okay. With around 250, 300 students a year. 
Um, that's not a lot. It's growing, it's growing. It's yeah, but I mean, that's, uh, you give them more attention be than being such a small exactly. number. Exactly. Yeah. We, we try not to farm students who we really do focus on developing them. And my job is to get them jobs after. So not only do you go, I've got to find you a job after. Yeah. So as the client, you come in, you're trained. Yeah. And then we talk about your career, where you want to go. And then my job is to open those doors and to ensure that you stay in the, in the job. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, any basic qualifications or you can be from... High school Edward? graduate. That's enough? That's it. That's High enough. school graduate. English speaking. Sorry. English speaking. And then when you come in, you go through a little interview process. And then that's it. You're straight into the kitchen. Post your six months or two years with AHA, uh -huh, no? mm. what kind of jobs do they get? Great jobs. I mean, the industry is huge. It's, it's, it's always growing. But, you know, we've got guys now that are head chefs, second chefs, sous chefs. They're on ships, restaurants, hotels, bars. A number of them become entrepreneurs themselves. A hundred thousand dollars a year. No, oh, we're talking about. They're very, actually, we're we're the most reasonable school out. No, there. no, not the no. fees. The, oh, the, the salaries. The, the salaries when they. Uh, I've got jobs for at the moment for mm, 150, 200,000 pesos a month. I've got jobs for six, seven, eight thousand dollars. Are you are you focused more on placing them in the country or outside the country? You know what, I, I love yeah. to see, I, it, it's really up to the individual. They tell me what they want to do, and I'll do my best mm -hmm. to you know, find the round peg, round hole, to, to make sure that we you know, realign. I, I, don't, I don't want students that are in jobs that they don't feel they're, they're growing and their career is not developing. Mm -hmm. So we're all about career development. Yeah. What is this now? Let's, let's have a taste of that. Come on. I need some pizza of. bread to go with this. Yeah, that's what you need. It's yeah, pizza bread, am I right? I yeah, guess it right. would be. But <coughs> Is that, is that now burned enough or is that cooked enough, I mean, not burned enough? <laughs> <laughs> That's cooked enough. It's nice and golden brown. It's not Sunug, black. it's called it Tagalog, Sunug, na? Hey, you, you, you ate straight out of the mixer. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah, it's fair. Huh. That's very spicy. It needs a bit more salt. But that's very spicy. That'll kick that chicken out. I love that. Wow. Fire. That's all paprika. No, that one's chilies. Habanero. Oh, oh, which no one is that? No paprika in that. So then that's why you've got the... I need a glass of wine. And that's why you need this after. If you cook for that, <laughs> go. Now it balances it. <laughs> I think you need some chicken as well. This is your way to yeah. make me stop asking questions, right? Is it right? If that's the way, yeah. To stop asking questions. Let's have a look. I'll cook that a bit. Bring that Throw in. me some chicken quickly. Let's go. So, if you were a uh, yeah. 25 year old Filipino. Right. Yeah? And you were just naturally good at cooking. Yeah. And your name was not Chef Golding. Yeah. What kind of restaurant would you put up and where? Today, uh, in the Philippines. I, I would tend to, I tend to look at a coffee shop. Yeah, coffee shops are always great. The business um, is Coffee is shop and no food, breakfast. no food. No, breakfast. Coffee shop as in yeah. breakfast, put lunch, it down dinner. Here. Oh, good. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. So, yeah. as in breakfast, lunch, dinner. Yeah. Yeah, you want to cut that? Yeah, I'll cut that. I want to chop it up, you know. This is, up, this is a chicken that was taking a shower a while ago. That was the, well, they didn't take a bath, no, not yet. <laughs> the one in the sous vide does, but this one is, is, is again, very tender, soft. Hey, what do you call that in Tagalog? How do you say it? Which chicken one? that took a shower. Took a shower? Yeah. How do you say that, Ron? How do you say that, Ron, in Tagalog? Naliligo ang manok. You probably speak more of Tagalog than me. Naliligo. There you go. Right. I, I need some lemon in this. Lime. Lime. That's you it. Take it and some yogurt. Yeah. In, in yogurt go. would be fantastic. Do you and again, rock salt. This is cool. And we use different types of salt now in cooking. Ah. So, as as Ronnie was rightly said, is that we're trying to reduce. Mm. The this has absolutely no salt. Very very small amount of salt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that uh, you know you got a little bit of soy sauce on the side, wouldn't you? So, a coffee house. Coffee house, um, you know, volume business coming through, um, maybe a little bit of catering on the side, but for a 25 year old that wants to get into the business, I, I would recommend first they come and do a little bit of um, three months with hands you. on, yeah, hands on. Three months, six months with you? Come and do the course with us, mm -hmm. then we'll, you know, it's very hands on. It's not just 
textbook. You really get them yeah. out cooking at events, functions, and in the restaurant. Oh, so they get some experience. A lot of experience with you or with the group. Okay. Very important. And then that's mm. I know my students will be. So, so don't go into business unless and until you have had some internship. I would say maybe not. Yes. An apprentice to someone He's like got you. It, yeah. Six months is good. Six months is great. How much money would he need? Or she need? Probably around 350,000 pesos. That's it? That's, that's it? that's it? That's it? Less than a million pesos. Less than half a million. Uh, less than half a million. Definitely. And uh, again, that's for quality education. Quality education is very important. Oh, for the education? I thought for the business. Oh, no, for the business. Oh, well, you need probably about 4 million, 5 million. Oh, that's yeah. a good coffee house. And would that be in the heart of the city or would you recommend? That'd be in the heart of the city. Um, uh, really, it's the rent. The rent now, mm -hmm. per square meter, is the one yeah. that you've got to really evaluate. So it's not so much the setting up of yeah. the restaurant. It's basically the running costs, your operating expenses. Mm -hmm. The capital expenditure, you could start with two million. But in Manila, now McCarthy, maybe seven Three. years ago, eight years ago, now you'd be looking at four million. Three to four up. million. Yeah. What do you think of uh, franchising, the restaurants like in Asal and Chick Boy in the South, stuff like yeah. that? I mean, they're, they're great. I mean, they really are money making machines. Yeah. But again. Is that 99 pesos, they're money making machines? Volume. It's based upon volume, so they get cheaper purchasing power for their chickens because they buy tons of chicken. Right? Okay. So it's economies of scale. But I, I think that, as I said, the Philippines are still very open to concepts. Franchises, I think that you can still develop your own restaurants here. Right? First. And make them look as if they were a franchise. Would you be a consultant to somebody who wanted to start Absolutely. up? Absolutely. Uh, what kind of uh, arrangement would you want? Oh, we do management arrangements. We do... Um, joint ventures, we do partnerships, and we do uh, just go in, turn key. We set everything up, hand it over. So the headaches are eliminated because we have the suppliers, the purchasers, the interior decorators. We even have the manpower. Which is Ron, of course. When he graduates, yeah, he will be out there, obviously, yeah. doing very, very well. So, Ron, what do you call this chicken? I would call it like a grilled paprika chicken. That's with it? With a grilled fresh paprika sauce and a pecan sauce. So what is the difference between these two, sir? Absolutely nothing. They're the same dishes. That's oh. the breast and that's the leg. Oh, okay, <laughs> but I like the leg <laughs> part more. Do you like the legs? You know, it's mm. very funny, but in the Philippines, people prefer brown meat. Over Europe, people prefer white meat. And actually, the leg meat has a lot of flavor. Right? Mm. But again, you've got to cook it longer so than in the In terms of nutrition? Meat. In terms of nutrition, I would actually... And chicken is the whole chicken, so really, nutritionally, as long as you cook it without so much oil, it's good there, and it's being broken down by all the acidity and the lime and stuff, but, you know, both nutritionally very, very good, right? So, not deep fried chicken. Chef Golding, thank you for the chicken, the paprika chicken and the paprika chicken leg. Wonderful having you on the show. Thank you very thanks much. Thanks for the insights, and thanks for cooking on the show. Thank God the fire alarm didn't go off, no? And if there's anything you want to tell us, do you want to tell us about the book quickly? Because we're about to wrap up the show. Okay, yeah, basically the book will be out by the end of the year. Um, this is with the 60 recipes, yeah. wholesome. Eat and cheat cancer. So if you're on Facebook, yeah. Yeah. if you're Facebook, please join uh, Eat and Cheat Cancer. Eat and Cheat. Yeah, Correct. Eat and Cheat Cancer. Eat and Cheat Cancer, yeah. that's the title of the book? That yeah. will be the title of the book. And you like the word cheat, not cheating tomatoes, cheating cancer. Yeah, cheat, 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 okay. you know okay. what I mean? So you know, get rid of that cancer and... You know, focus on well-being or prevention, obviously. Prevention okay. is where we're aiming at. That's what we mean. You know, yeah. www.ahafill.com is the school. And then uh, we launch our website, which will be the Golden Culinary Group, um, in the next uh, few weeks as well. So I saw it. It was down. Yes. I checked down, yeah. We're just moving it to the next phase. So. All right, so thank you. thank you very much, Ron. Thank Ron, you very much for cooking on this show. And mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. I'm not full yet, but maybe we'll do lunch at your place. So, gracias, salama. So, that was Chef Golding from AHA and from Golding Culinary School. Culinary Group. Culinary Group. And next week on Expat Insights, we'll have a gentleman from Australia who is bringing in tourists to do dental work in the Philippines. So, stay watching. Expat Insights, good night and mabuhay. See you. Bye-bye. Very good.